This is Giant's 2021 Trant E. 29er based electric mountain bike. It's got 150 fork and 140 mil rear travel. So it's based on the Yamaha PWX2 motor. 80 newton meters of torque and it's got a 625 watt hour internal battery that can be removed with a single tool. In this video, I'll be riding the top level Trance E and it's priced at £5,799. It's got an aluminium frame with trail based geometry and the bike weighs in at 24 and a half kilos in extra large. The bike features Giant's Maestro suspension linkage with adjustable geometry to steepen up the head angle. And it's the only Yamaha based e-bike on the market to have a totally customised firmware. That means that Giant have taken a blank motor from Yamaha and customised absolutely everything about it. The Yamaha motor in my experience has been pretty decent. It's got a nice amount of power, very, very smooth and a quiet motor. As well as testing the custom Giant firmware, I'll also be testing the handling and overall performance of the bike. I'm riding it on my local trails, the Surrey Hills, a mixture of short descents with tons of steep climbs and a perfect place to test an e-bike's trail capabilities, handling characteristics, as well as its climbing abilities. I tested the bike over a few weeks and rode in all kinds of conditions, from dry to wet and from warm to sub-zero snowy temperatures. This gave me a really good understanding of how the bike would perform in some pretty harsh conditions. First up, it's been a while since I've tested a bike with less than 150mm of rear travel, with most e-bikes, certainly on paper, being specced with 150 or more. So I took it to my local drop to flat to see how it felt. I'd have never have guessed that it only had 140 mil of rear travel. Giant have done an outstanding job on the Maestro rear suspension. And I found that with the DPX2 correctly set up, it felt like I used all of the available travel, but without a single bottom out. Not only that, but it felt incredibly supple and soaked up all the small bumps very well. And it provided a very active first third of the travel before ramping up well and soaking up the bigger hits. The long chain stay meant that when it got very tight and twisty, it was a little more effort to get it to turn in, as quick as it might have been if it had a shorter rear centre. But on the whole, I was impressed with its handling characteristics. Especially over this wet, root and slippy terrain that I'm riding on right now. The suspension platform is fantastic. It's very, very plush off the top, super supple suspension and this DPX2 on the rear works superb. There's three settings, I've kept it in the middle kind of trail setting, and I can feel the back moving around and picking up on, over the roots and helping that rear tire dig in. And the Fox 36 Performance Elite is super plush and is soaking up all the little roots, all the little bumps. And the frame, and the kinematics and the suspension feel absolutely beautiful. It feels like it's tracking the ground superbly and it helps you navigate some of this little kind of technical rooty sections and give you the maximum amount of grip. And despite riding in some spectacularly wet, cold and icy conditions, I found I had enough confidence in the bike to find enough grip. Although the Maxxis Dissector rear tyre is definitely out of its depth here, it's not really suited to the wet, cold UK winter. Mm. 
climb to test what e-bikes are really masters of, climbing. The bike is powered by the Yamaha PWX2 motor, but Giant have tuned it to make it more powerful. Essentially, this means that Giant have unlocked the full 80 Nm of torque in all assistance modes, not just the top one. There's also a Smart Assist mode. Think of it more like an automatic mode, and it's based on a number of factors. It analyzes six sensors in the motor, riding speed, cadence, motor speed, rider torque, bike incline, and also an accelerometer. And with all those measurements, it determines the level of assistance the rider needs. Giant claim that the maximum torque is delivered in just 0.19 seconds after it detects the rider's input. Paired with a short engagement angle, it's designed to make starting on steep slopes much easier. I tell you what, as a climbing bike, there are some real benefits that it has. The long chainstay just keeps the front planted on the deck. And the Yamaha motor, with the 80 Newton meters of torque, is super progressive, very, very natural feeling, and has loads of power on tap to propel you up these little short climbs. It's a beautiful motor. I really do like the Yamaha motor, and it's really quiet on climbing as well. All right, just going up a short climb, and this is the motor noise. I'm in the mid level, mode four out of five, five out of five. And the motor is really silent. One thing I've noticed about the motor is the engagement is instant, almost a little bit twitchy. Like when you've got your foot on the pedal, even when the bike has just sat there and you're relaxed, it wants to go, it's super eager. Can be a little bit off-putting if you're just standing around chatting and you've got your feet on the pedals. But when you're on a steep incline like this and you know you've got to get going straight away and it senses your torque you're putting through the pedals instantly, meaning that you don't even really have to try and propel yourself up steep climbs. It is just ready to go instantly. The bike is actually one of the most impressive climbing bikes I've tested so far. I really appreciate Giant's customization and allowing the maximum power to be reached even in the lower assistance modes. The battery level was also pretty impressive despite the sub-zero temperatures. Now the battery, as well as the battery management system, is actually built for Giant by Panasonic. And they use lithium cobalt manganese cells. The cells have their own temperature gauge and Giant's smart battery and smart charger tech make sure they all reach their full charge at the same time and at the same temperature. And because of this, Giant are able to supply six amp fast chargers with these bikes. I am impressed with the Yamaha drive unit. It's punchy, it's powerful, it's smooth, it's very progressive in delivering the power. Five power modes on this super neat little display here. I do think Giant are onto a good path with the custom software and putting in this auto mode. It's like a set and forget mode and it's supposed to give you more assistance when you request it through the pedals. I don't think it's quite there just yet and I've preferred the default power modes. I found that occasionally the Smart Assist would give small surges of power that I wasn't quite expecting, mainly when riding on more flat terrain. But other than that, it worked okay, but my personal preference was just one of the regular power modes. But overall, it's a sweet package. I really like the Yamaha motor. Nice and punchy, decent power, instant delivery of power when you're requesting it on steep hills, nicely neat uh, integrated controller, decent 625 watt hour battery that's super easy to remove with one Torx key, and a neatly integrated magnet just based on the inside of the chainstay and the brake disc. So the geometry of the bike is trail orientated, so it's like a 66 degree, just under 66 degree head angle. So you've got a little flip chip in the rear and you can make it steeper or slacker. Loads of bikes are coming with them these days. They're a really great idea. I've been riding with it in the slackest or low position. It's superb on climbs. With that long chainstay, it's glued to the ground. However, because the chainstay 
is fairly long, you lose some of that nimbleness and agility on the tight and twisty trails. With all bike geometry, there's trade-offs. Things happen when you go one way and it benefits something and it makes something else slightly worse. So whilst the bike is a superb climber, the rear chainstay is really long, at just over 470 mil. The bike is comfortable and easy to ride. The long wheelbase with a long rear centre and 507mm reach in XL meant my weight was fairly evenly distributed across the bike. I didn't have to focus on getting my weight over the front to find grip through the front wheel. The only things on the bike I really would have liked to have seen is a lighter bike, although lighter bikes are usually a lot more expensive, and a shorter chainstay although a shorter rear would make the bike a bit less impressive on the climbs, but it would make up for it on the tighter, twistier trails. So the 2021 Giant Trance E, superbly capable electric mountain bike. I've really enjoyed riding it around here on my local trails in the Surrey Hills. 29er wheels, very active rear suspension that's plenty progressive enough to make it feel like it's got more than the 140 travel that it's actually got. 80 Newton meters of torque, so it's plenty powerful enough for the steepest climbs around here. And uh, it's super stable and stuck to the ground. The suspension platform is really good. It's super effective at soaking up small bumps, bigger hits, very progressive feeling. And the Fox fork on the front is brilliant. And the kit level is really good. It comes with Shimano XT four pot brakes, which are super powerful. The brilliant Shimano 12 speed drivetrain, which is beautiful at shifting. And the Shimano XT shifter unit, you can do the double release downshifts. And I think the bike is pretty competitively priced. If you look at the kit level, the battery, and what you're getting for your money, it's a pretty decent package. There's three bikes in the range and the UK starting price is £4,699. Giant also make a range of women's specific bikes under their live brand. And the Intrigue X shares the exact same e-bike technology as the bike that I'm riding now. So you can check out your budget and look at the bike that might fit that. But I think even this one at the top level being under six grand is pretty competitive if you look at what else is on the market. So I've loved my time riding the Giant Trance E, looking forward to taking it out a little bit more. And if you've got any questions, pop them down below. Thanks for watching, subscribe for weekly e-bike videos and I'll catch you soon.